how can you test your Aspire application in .NET? That is what I'll try to answer in this video, where we are going to write our first integration test with Aspire. I'll discuss the pros and cons and what I like about it, and when I would not recommend using Aspire testing for your applications. I'll start with a quick overview from the Aspire docs and shout out to the Aspire team. The documentation for this is really, really good. Now, when it comes to testing, here's a basic diagram of what happens when you run a test with .NET Aspire. So you've got your Aspire test project that is going to start your Aspire app host. Now, note that this can be heavy. This is going to run your database, your API, possibly some front-end applications, and any other infrastructure components that you have. And then you can write your tests against your infrastructure, for example, by sending a GET request with an HTTP client. So that's the basic idea. Now, how do we actually write our first integration test using Aspire? I've got a decently complicated Aspire app host here with an Azure service bus resource, a Postgres resource, Redis, and I've also got two API applications, the Tags API and the Notes API that communicate with each other with a combination of asynchronous messaging and some direct synchronous HTTP calls. Now, what I would typically reach for if I wanted to do integration testing between these components is test containers, but we're not going to cover that in this video. Instead, we're going to do integration testing with Aspire. So let me start by adding a test project to my solution. I'll say add new project and I'll pick an X unit test project. Let's call this Notely Tests and I'm going to scaffold this using .NET 10. Now I have to do some cleanup with my test project setup because it doesn't respect central package management, which I have enabled. So I'm going to fast forward when this is done. So I just upgraded the package references to no longer have a version and I've got the version specified inside of my directory packages props. I also went ahead and updated it to the latest versions. Now our initial unit test is going to compile and let's rename this to be integration tests. And I'm also going to use file scoped namespaces. And I just want to have my file inside without the additional level of nesting. Now, what do we need to write our first test with Aspire? We are going to need the Aspire testing package. So let's go ahead and look for that. I'll say Aspire and then testing and the one we want to install is called Aspire Hosting Testing. I'll go ahead and add the latest version and now let me show you how to write your first test with Aspire. One of the first recommendations from the Aspire team is to use some sort of timeout in your tests. It can be arbitrary, let's say 30 seconds, for example, and we'll use this timeout in all of our asynchronous calls inside of our tests. So what can we test with .NET Aspire? Well, we can obtain an HTTP client when we start the Aspire app host and send a request to our API, for example, to check if the API is healthy. This could be the simplest test you can write. Let's call this test get notes api health returns okay i'll use the arrange act and assert format for my test and we'll start with an cancellation token so i'll say cancellation token none and the first thing we need in the arrange step is to create our app host so we're going to say await distributed application testing builder and this exposes our create async method now to be able to reference our app host I'll need a project reference inside my test project. I'm just going to do a drag and drop to add this. And then I can access my test host by saying projects. And here's the Notely app host. Now, of course, for this to work, I have to make my test method asynchronous. And now I've got my app host. And what can we do with it? Well, we can go ahead and call build or let's say build async. And let's pass in the cancellation tokens here. I'll await this. And this is going to return our distributed application. If you take a look at the type of this variable, it's a distributed application, which is what we are configuring in the Aspire app host here. So once we've got our distributed application, then we can go ahead and say await app and then start async. And this is what actually starts the Aspire app host. Now, where does the timeout come in? We can chain a call to wait async and pass in the default timeout here. I'll do the same when starting the application. So let's pass in our timeouts. And this is just going to prevent the test from hanging if something goes wrong and we want to prevent the test from running indefinitely. Some other things you can do here is configure how you set up your distributed application builder. For example, when calling create async, 
I can pass in any environment variables that I need. And I also have an option to extend the distributed application options. For example, I may want to enable the Aspire dashboard if that's something I need inside of my tests. Now I'm going to use the simplified version, but let me actually add this and comment it out so it remains here as a demo of what's possible. Another thing that can be helpful is configuring your services on the actual app host. For example, I can add logging here and configure my logging services. And let's say logging, I can set the minimum level to let's say log level information. I can also add filters for different namespaces to set the minimum log level for that namespace. So this is our arrange step, where after this line completes, we have a running Aspire app host. Now, what can we do with it? For example, I can create an HTTP client by accessing my distributed application, and I have this create HTTP client method. Now I need to pass it a resource name, and I want to use the notes API. And then what I can do is access my app host, and there's this resource notifications property, which gives you a way to wait for your resources or their dependencies to be ready to accept requests. So for example, I can say wait for resource healthy async, pass in the resource name of notes API. Let's also pass in our cancellation token and I'll say wait async with the default timeout. So once this completes, I know that my notes API is healthy and then I can call this using my HTTP client by calling the health endpoint. And finally, I can write my assert step where I want to say something like assert equal, and let's say HTTP status code, and for example, okay. And I'm comparing this to the response status code. So this is what an integration test with Aspire would look like. And this is a very simple one where we just test if our notes API is healthy. Now, let me go ahead and run this. And as this is running behind the scenes, I will open up Docker desktop. So you can see how our resources are starting up as Docker containers as the test is running behind the scenes. Now let's focus on the actual test, which is going to time out in this example, because configuring and starting the app host is an expensive operation. Now I'm going to just rerun this because I've got my resources up and running behind the scenes and I'm using persistent container lifetimes. So I'm hoping that this next run should be successful and you can see it completes after about 20 seconds. So running these tests with Aspire is definitely not cheap. Now I'll show you a way how we can make this better. We have this concept of an iAsync lifetime with X unit and let me implement this interface and it exposes two methods, initialize async and dispose async. Now these allow me to create my expensive resources before running my actual tests. So I'm going to create a copy of my initial test and I'll comment out the original implementation because I want to show you what a simplified version could look like. So I can create a field inside of this test, which is going to be my distributed application. Let's call this the app. And then what I want to move into the async lifetime setup is this step here up to creating my distributed application. So I'm going to drop this here. I'll also reuse the cancellation token. And I don't want to have a using statement here because I just want to assign this to my field. Inside of dispose async, I'm going to say await app dispose async. And this is going to release any resources for my distributed application. And now my test can be simplified to no longer setting up the app host or anything inside of there. I'm going to get rid of all of that I just want to call start async and then the other steps that we're using the distributed application. So this is going to somewhat simplify my test setup. So this is great. I can also centralize any configuration inside of the initialize async method, like adding any filters for the Microsoft ASP.NET Core namespace and the Aspire namespace. We can also configure some resilience with the HTTP clients that we create using the Aspire app host. And now writing some future tests is going to be a lot simpler. So let me reuse my existing test to write the next one. And I'll call this create note with notes API returns instead of okay, I'll say create my arrange step is going to look almost identical, except I'm just going to move waiting for my notes API resource to become healthy also into the arrange step. And in the act step, I want to call the notes endpoint. I'm also getting some IntelliSense here, which is great. And I want to post my request as a JSON. Now I don't have my request type directly. So I'll add a project reference for the notes API into my test project, but I will also drop in 
an internals visible to configuration inside of my nodes API. And I just want to expose any internal types to the Notely test project. So now this should allow me to write something like this for my request object. I want to say new create node endpoint and then I can access my request. I can pass in the title and the content of my node and we can go ahead and execute this and we expect to get back a 201 created response. So let's go ahead and run our two tests at the same time and see what's going to happen and if the execution time is going to be any faster. This time you can see both our tests complete in eight and five seconds respectively. And the total execution time is lower than our previous example because we moved the expensive part, which is setting up the app host into the initialize async method. And this doesn't affect the runtime for the individual tests. Now, one more thing you can do is also debug your tests. For example, I can place a breakpoint inside of my endpoint. Let's go to the create node endpoint and the actual delegate. And now I can right click my test and say debug. And I should expect to hit this breakpoint when the app host starts and my request is sent from the test. This is going to allow me to step into my code and take a deeper look at what's going on inside, if our database interactions are correct. And in this example, if we are also successfully sending the message using Azure Service Bus. Now I'm going to stop this as I want to show you a very useful integration that you can add to your test projects. And this is an extra NuGet package that we'll have to install. So I'm going to look for XUnit logging and i want to install the latest version of this package called martin costello logging x unit let me go ahead and add that and this is going to allow us to output our aspire application logs for the individual tests now all we have to do after installing the nuget package is say logging add x unit and we need an additional dependency here and this is going to be the i test output helper that I can inject in my test and then I can pass it down here when calling add X unit. Now let me show you what happens this time when I run my two tests. You can see our tests complete successfully again, but this time we also have some logs in the standard output for the tests. I can open my test log as a file and go through the actual application logs that happen inside of my test. And this can be very useful when debugging some test failures. Now, what I want to note here is, for example, something like this. You can see the actual SQL logs outputted by EF Core from my notes API, which explicitly tell us that we are running an insert statement into the notes table. So this allows us to easily confirm that our integration from the notes API to the database is working correctly. So this is a great little helper library that I highly recommend when running your Aspire test. It'll make troubleshooting a lot easier. A couple more things you can do with Aspire is check if your environment variables are set. Here's a quick example of that from the Aspire documentation. You don't actually need to start the application. You just want access to the distributed application builder and then you can access the environment variables for your resource and confirm that the one that you're looking for is specified inside. You can also use this to obtain a connection string from let's say a database resource and run a query against it to confirm that some data was properly inserted into the database or removed from it. Now I also want to share my thoughts on testing with Aspire and when I think it's useful or not. So I definitely like the abstractions that we have here. It makes it easy to start a pretty complicated application and test out the interactions between your components. I would recommend using this for integrations between your services. Like in this example here, where I'm calling my notes API, this is also under the hood, reaching out to the other API project that I have in this solution. And what I can do after validating that my note was created is also test out that my message sent with Azure Service Bus was processed in the other application. So this type of end-to-end -end test is very useful in a simple microservices setup like I've got here. Now I have to note that this type of testing is particularly heavy for some simple integrations. If all I want to test is my notes API and how it talks with the database, I would preferably use test containers for that since it's going to be a lot simpler to manage and it's also going to be faster to execute. But as far as I'm concerned, Aspire testing is definitely useful and I think you should add it to your tool stack. Let me know in the comments what you think about testing with Aspire and if you want to see how I set up integration testing inside of my CI CD pipelines like GitHub Actions using test containers and Docker, then go ahead and check out this video next. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.